Well, I had a chance today to go to church with one of the kids from camp who lives kind of near where the camp is. And, you know, I was staying around anyway Saturday night into Sunday morning. So I attended today worship at the Goshen, Indiana Church of the, Bre church of the Brethren. Really enjoyed their fellowship. One of the things that I was I was touched by at this church is that they are an open and welcoming congregation. And you know, the Church of the Brethren, like lots of churches these days, perhaps every denomination in the United States anyway, perhaps even North America, I don't know. wrestling and struggling with the boundaries that exist around the church. Who's in and who is out. You know, that sort of thing. Specifically, we're struggling in the space of the, what we would call the LB, heck I'm never good at this, LBTQ. <laughs> so GLBTQ people. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and then I don't know what does the Q stand for? Queer? I, I don't know. Queer seems like such a derogatory term to me. But maybe it isn't. I don't know. Maybe it's a statement of pride. But this congregation at Goshen, Indiana was very much open. You could tell that right out of the gate. In their worship, the, wor the, 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 the people that were there were so diverse. A wide range of age, age ranges and people who were obviously homosexual well as some of the old school brethren people who, uh, you know, have been in the Church of the Brethren probably since the day they were born. And even in the liturgy of their service, they spoke about these things, about the church as a community of believers struggling together to wrestle with and understand you know, the Word of God and how we interpret that appropriately and intelligently and how we live our lives and our faith as community and how we reach out to include those that are marginalized while at the same time maintaining our own identity and standards. And it's, it's a great dialogue. On the way to church, I was talking with one of the members there who actually gave me a ride up there, and I asked him, hey, what's the flavor of your congregation? And he shared with me that they were an open congregation and that, in fact, their church is going to be taking a vote for their congregation on how they stand relative to gay marriage. But for them, it's more than just an issue. I had a chance to meet a woman by the name of Angela and her partner, Kim. And what's amazing to me is that I, I was in their Sunday school class and we were talking about this. And they shared, you know, how, how deeply in love they are with each other and that they have been together, you know, for a long, long time in a committed, loving relationship and how they were baptized together in this congregation and how they would like to be married. Now, what's interesting, I'm going to have to do some research on this, but as I look at our own denomination, the Church of the Brethren, 
the, the governing body of the church. We're, we're not like other denominations where we have, say, like a pope or, you know, a person who is the head of the church. We're ruled by the body that's called the annual conference, and that is delegates from every congregation all over the world come and meet and vote, you know, discuss about it, discuss issues that come up and vote about it. And to my knowledge, the Church of the Brethren has, has not yet sanctioned gay marriage. And, you know, to that end, I find it interesting that a local congregation is going to take a vote on how they're going to function. And I'd be interested to see how that plays out. And how the annual conference uh, chooses to either support or admonish this congregation. I would say we're not of one mind. And, you know, that, that's all right. I, I, I think people on both sides of the issues are where they are with good reason and their own accord. Those that are opposed to gay marriage believe that it's counter to scripture and they're trying to uphold, you know, some traditional worldviews and a heritage that names, you know, the sanctity of marriage as husband and wife married in the eyes of God. But then, you know, the other side of the issue is, you know, those who have a vision and a view for a church community that is open to those who live very moral lives and are committed to one another and just happen to be in love with someone of the same sex. How does the church interact with that? Today we, you know, largely exclude them. They're marginalized. But is that the right thing to do? It's just a fantastic, fantastic debate, a dilemma. One of the things that's the truth is you look at the at church history, you know, throughout, you know, literally all time, there's always some dilemma that comes up. Where the church has to debate it, talk about it, work together, work it out, come to some kind of resolution, and almost predictably there will be those that can't live with that resolution. They'll, they'll probably divide and move on. <coughs> Maybe be, become their own denomination. Or, well, either way, that, that decision would go either way. No matter what the annual conference says, you, you, you probably see, a, hopefully not, you see a potential division coming. that's one that I'll try to follow if you're interested in that. If you're interested in that, please comment below and I'd be willing to entertain a dialogue with you on the subject. It's a, it's a complicated issue. And like all, all these issues in the church, nothing's really so easy. It isn't always black and white. Thanks for riding along with the Midwestern Cowboy. This is Iron Horse. Thanks for watching.